If you love to talk about high school language arts curriculum, raise your hand. I, I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of hands raised, but I love writing, I love literature, I love language, and I'm going to sit here and talk your ear off about language arts curriculum today. This was actually a requested video that I had to create a video going on a deeper look into and just kind of talking about what the Abeka High School Language Arts program includes and what you can expect from it and some of the strengths and the weaknesses of this program. This video was requested after I recently did a review video on the Good and the Beautiful High School Language Arts curriculum and I mentioned a little bit about Abeka in that video and some of you wanted to see more. So I'm here to show you this curriculum today. So what I have here to show you is most of the pieces from Abeka's 10th grade language arts curriculum. I have some test books, test and quiz books here. What I do not have here is the schedule or home homeschool guide which has a daily schedule for the student. We did have that once upon a time. I actually used that back when I was in 10th grade. Um, but somehow in our family's many moves, it did not survive. It, it was not considered essential enough to survive. I do recommend if you are planning to use this, I think having the scheduler and kind of the daily checklist helps and makes it easy. So it kind of takes the thinking out of when to do what because it schedules everything out. It's, it's a little bit more than a checklist, but it's mostly in my memory a checklist <laughs> um, so that is a valuable tool and not something i can show you right now but it exists and it's on their website i'll go through each element kind of separately here but these are the major elements grammar and composition vocabulary spelling and poetry and then world literature and the whole books that you'll be reading now let's talk about it um, you will notice if you go to the abeka website that the covers of mine are different that's because these are older editions um, but they have updated editions but abeka does not tend to change dramatically into something that is totally different from abeka it's it has stayed fairly consistent through the years so the general, you'll be able to get the same general idea even if there are a few different details or a little bit of different content. It's overall gonna look pretty much the same. Now, throughout all of Abeka Language Arts, you get a vocabulary, spelling, and poetry book. These are combined into one book. And, you know, some people still wanna do spelling in high school. Some people feel they're pretty good at spelling by the time you get to high school. This is pretty cool. They have occasional readings about the history of the English language, which I'm all, I'm all about linguistic history. Here's our spelling lists, 1A and 1B. They tell you what rule is being tested, and there's not a whole lot to do in this book. It's basically a list, and your child can follow ideas from the teacher's guide on what they could do to practice those words, or they can just use whatever their favorite strategy is to learn words that they need to spell. Then there is a vocabulary list, typical list of vocabulary words with definitions and example sentences, and you get a few short exercises on using those vocabulary words. So exercise E, I think there's about five. So you can do one short exercise each day and then you will take your quiz at the end of the week on your spelling words and vocabulary words. Also in the back of the book, there are poems to be memorized throughout the year. So your student is scheduled to work on certain poems and then they recite them. There you can see a list of the poems. So this is Abeka's famous grammar and composition book. Throughout high school, the 9th and 10th grade years have this very large book. And then 11th and 12th grades have a, some kind of grammar and composition, what's it called, handbook? Yeah, there's a handbook for grammar and composition, just a little handbook of grammar rules. And then a separate workbook with exercises that is much shorter and it just references the information in the workbook. But the same, pretty much the same topics are gonna be covered throughout all of high school. 
Rebecca is spiral, so it's gonna do capitalization this year and then it's gonna do capitalization again next year. It's reviewing and it's giving you many, many opportunities to learn these concepts. Uh, although these concepts are introduced in elementary school, of course, you do go in a little bit deeper. They'll review old concepts that were already introduced. They'll teach them again, but they're also gonna give you, okay, well, here's another rule that you might run into or another purpose of adverbs or, you, you know, many, many, you know, it, it gets into the really nitty gritty of grammar. And then there's also composition units in here. What I always say about Rebecca is that they're very strong on all their grammar rules and lots of opportunities to practice grammar rules. I would say that they're a lot weaker on their composition, on their actual writing instruction. They do have, you know, the, all the basic forms of writing covered here. They have a little bit on improving writing style. They have instruction on planning a research paper. Um, I will just say I am a writer. I have. Uh, and, and I graduated, I, I took this all throughout high school and I still ended up um, writing professionally. So it's not that it's going to necessarily kill a love of writing or leave you totally unprepared for writing. It just isn't the strong, like the writing curriculum that's gonna be super, super strong on you know writing and both creative writing and really, really building solid arguments. It's. It's there, but it's a lot more in kind of outline format, some of those general concepts um, for um, creating solid writing. So then what you can expect in the book is there will be these green boxes that have all the rules that they're teaching you, and then there will be multiple exercises to do throughout the book. And you do the exercises, and then, okay, now you're learning a new rule for capitalization. You do an exercise, so this is scheduled out for you in that um, schedule, the student schedule, and then there are tests and quizzes. So when you get to a certain point, then you get to take a quiz or you get to take a test after finishing a certain point in the book. And that's great um, for kids to be able to practice what they know. There's plenty of diagramming. So you will, okay, diagram the following sentences. You'll get 10 sentences to diagram. Students usually love diagramming 10 sentences in a single exercise. Um, <laughs> you can feel very free to give them five, to tell them do five sentences first. And if they get it, just skip, <laughs> skip the rest of them. <laughs> that, that's a good old Becca strategy for you. I'll show you here a little bit. There is information on learning how to cite sources. We get a sample what a paper might look like. I don't know if the more updated version looks a little bit less like a paper written on a typewriter. <laughs> um, and it has, it has some, a little bit of like this copy, which seemed kind of outdated when I was doing it in some elements with the dictionary skills and so on because I might be showing my age here but most of our research, most of our dictionary looking up and thesauruses have always been online for my entire life. Uh, we haven't, see, here's our, like, you know, World Wide Web uh, <laughs> um, resource. This does, this did seem a little outdated. I hope that they have. Um, and you can let me know if you've used this in a more recent edition than the what edition is this? Third edition. If they have updated it a little bit more to keep up with the times. Um, but there's dictionary skills, lot, there's, there's composition, and there are writing assignments in here. But fairly minimal. I wouldn't say that the writing assignments, writing instruction is its biggest strength, but its grammar certainly is. And it tests, it, it teaches, and it tests all the nitty gritty grammar stuff that you will find on the SAT and ACT. So it's very good for test prep um, type of grammar. Now to look at the books that you will be studying. There are two full books, which is Julius Caesar by Shakespeare, that play, as well as Silas Marner. Those are the two books you study. And then you have a world literature, um, which is a literature uh, compendium here. And this is mainly either short stories, poems, or it's extracts from longer works. And I'm gonna give you a look at the contents 
you're going to see quite a few very major authors. Um, when I talked about the Good and the Beautiful uh, literature, and I felt like one of the weaknesses was that they really don't cover many of the very major authors and major works uh, within history. So we don't have Edgar Allan Poe in The Good and the Beautiful, um, but I think he was a very influential author um, in, in history. So someone that we ought to read. We've got quite a few. You can, I'm just trying to give you a glimpse at some of the authors and works that are being studied. But what's important to note is we aren't reading full books by these authors. We aren't reading, for the most part, full complete works. We are reading extracts, like a scene or a chapter or a short story. Also, something to note here. This is called world literature. We've got, okay, we've, we've got Leo Tolstoy. We've, we get a little bit beyond Western Europe, but I would say not far. Um, this is our The Ancient East section here, and it is, it is purposely, I think, done with a Christian slant, but we have world literature and we don't have anything from the Analects of Confucius. We don't have anything from the Art of War or um, any of the ancient Chinese classics. We don't have anything from Africa, from, um, you know, the island. We don't have any poetry even from, you know, island nations, Central America, South America. So I do feel <laughs> that that is something to just be aware of in a course called World Literature that it is primarily Western European literature, which Western European literature has been extremely influential in our history and in English literature in general. Um, not all of these, this literature was originally literature. We do have some, a couple of haikus from Japan. We, we, it's not solely Europe, but it is heavily <laughs> European literature. And that's, that's just something to be aware of. And Again, maybe they have updated this somewhat and included a greater variety uh, within the course, but it, if they haven't in the years since our current, this edition that I'm using, then that's just something to be aware of and think about how could you at, possibly add a little bit more from other cultures into uh, the readings what readings could you add and do a little bit of extra research so that our children aren't ending up thinking that world literature is best represented by European literature. Because people did write in other parts of the world and it can be hard for the Western person to even realize that because it, when, it, when it isn't becoming part of these kind of literature compendiums. So I'm, I'm trying, what I'm trying to show you here is they do have little inset um, articles or explanations here of great literary terms, simile, personification. We've got little biographies of the author. So those are some really cool factors. We do have some art, art studies incorporated into this book. So um, The Good and the Beautiful is not the only one that <laughs> combines art into literature study. We have some, we have metaphor right there. So you typically have something to read and then you'll have questions. You might also have vocabulary words, which in the schedule it might tell you, you know, hey, if you don't know any of these vocabulary words, look them up or um, look them up, maybe try to spell them, try to figure out, figure out how to use them. Don't just look at them because you're not necessarily going to know what they mean if you just look at them, but try to find out, find out somehow what they mean. So this is a poetry section. It tends to alternate between poetry and then prose sections. And so you'll see here, they're typically, this is not, this is a short extract. Some of them are a little bit longer, but a lot of them are very short readings. You can see this one is a longer one right here. And then if there is a longer reading, they'll probably have it divided up into several days. You have questions, you could have your child answer these orally, or you could have them write them, write the answers down. I think writing the answers, typing them up would be an excellent way to practice writing skills because this is a high school level course. Here, um, when there are some references, 
that you need a little bit of more information to understand, they include some extra you know, footnotes about what you're reading, and that's very helpful as well. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of helpful factors inside this textbook. Um, because when you are just reading a book, you don't necessarily have those tools like questions, vocabulary. Here, they'll give you suggestions for a writing assignment inspired by what you're reading. So, there are a lot of strengths that you can see here. We've got a little discourse on irony and satire. Um, but it is not without some weaknesses. So, you just need to be aware of whether this can be a good tool for you and your homeschool and what you can do as a teacher because you know the curriculum is not your boss the curriculum is a tool and you can add in any tools of your own where the curriculum itself is weak so this is a tool now the reason the main reason we haven't really used like i use this and maybe my second sister used this but most of my siblings have not actually used this world literature course while all of them have used grammar and composition, the main reason why is because we decided we actually really like reading whole books. And this is cool in that you get an exposure to a lot of, a lot of greats. You get to read, you know, some of Homer. You get to read Ovid. You get to read Dante. But you're reading like one scene <laughs> from it. And it does feel in some ways, you know, you only get to get a millimeter deep. And we, we did find out we there there is benefit to that and there it, it can be nice to get that one millimeter and then you get the opportunity you know if it piques your interest to go in deeper but we did find we like reading whole books for literature and that's one of the reasons we have kind of moved away from using this um, but then it's true you you can't read enough whole books to cover you know all of these authors in depth and in great detail uh, but this, this, is a, this is a curriculum that has been used by many. It, and I wanted to show it to you and explain what you can expect from it. And what, so you can decide for yourself whether it would be a good fit for your season right now.